Okay, um, let's do this thing. Monday Night Raw, folks. Monday Night Raw in a somewhat, I want to say, bizarre and almost strange edition of this show, which I see has pissed a lot of people off tonight. So, um, wow, what can I really say about Monday Night Raw? 24 hours after Money in the Bank last night, which I actually thought was a really great show last night. You can go check out my review that is uploaded online right now from last night, Money in the Bank. 2021 review, just a lot from Cena returning to the Money in the Bank winners to the title changes to a lot of big things happening on that show. But of course, Raw needs to draw ratings and whatnot tonight. So uh, what do we do? We bring back John Cena again. John Cena comes out. He gets a big pop, of course. It's Dallas, Texas. John Cena just hyping up the crowd, saying, y'all weren't just loud. You are deafening loud. Tonight is electric. It's Monday Night Raw. It's in Dallas, Texas. And, you know, everybody's thinking right now, uh, what is he going to wear? Is he going to wear the Peacemaker costume when the Suicide Squad premiere happens? But um, he went on to say he showed up in Money in the Bank and ruined the celebration of Roman Reigns. All right? And everybody said, um, you know, why, you know, who, why, when, and where, huh? Who brought me back? And he said it was uh, you. And it was Roman Reigns, because um, uh, basically when, you know, Reigns here, Cena said SummerSlam is coming. Uh, Vegas is the perfect place to do it. He could come out here and talk about, you know, going for a 17th world championship and whatnot. But Cena basically called him uh, an asshole or an asshole head of the table. They had blocked out those words, by the way. But um, when he called him an asshole then right in the camera, and he said, I believe Roman Reigns needs to be knocked down a peg, okay? This whole pathetic Roman Reigns experience has gone on long enough. And he says that's an arrogant, self-absorbed, overhyped, overprotected, overexposed gimmick. And, you know, who isn't over as he says he is. And this is coming from me, obviously. That's somewhat of a shoot in a way. And Cena... Uh, basically went on to say, I will be on SmackDown this Friday, and he can't wait to see Roman Reigns when he gets there, because he's got a lot to get off his chest, and it's time to get down to business. But after that, really great promo from Cena, um, we have Matt Riddle come out then, and you go, yeah, get a little bit of goofy Cena then after that too, and he goes on to say, um, bro, I, I get it, bro, and they got saying, bro, 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 bro. Bro, so they, they have to say bro a whole bunch of times. So you can tell Vince, uh, he does love Matt Riddle. They wouldn't have him out there with John Cena. But like I said, John Cena still can cut a great promo, still can hype the crowd up and get them excited and whatnot. I, like I said, I still like Cena's somewhat work shoot or just shoot promos just going in folks' heads and whatnot. So yeah, John Cena is back. And uh, like I said, Great way to kick off the show and hype up the crowd by having him on here. But, of course, he will be on SmackDown this Friday, though. I'm just going to assume. I can't assume he just be on SmackDown. But they're like, now nah, we got to have him on all the shows. So, Cena on Smack, uh, on Raw tonight, though. But we'll be on SmackDown this Friday. We didn't got a tag team match between Matt Riddle and the Viking Raiders versus AJ Styles, almost. And John Morrison or the um, America's Moist won it. John Morrison, uh, okay tag match, uh, you know, took some TV time and whatnot, uh, I know it got to one point where, um, Miz, or, I don't know, Riddle, he, uh, took Miz's drip stick and sprayed on almost. uh, almost went for the Miz then, Morrison tried to stop him, but, uh, almost picked up Morrison, threw him back into the ring, and didn't get hit with the Viking experience, um, for the win, so, I believe the tag belts are on the line next week anyways with AJ and almost versus, um, the Viking Rays again, if I'm not mistaken. So that's most likely supposed to happen again and whatnot. But yeah, like I said, solid tag match though. Um, next day went to Jackson Riker, who was facing Elias tonight. As Elias actually did his entrance in front of a full crowd again with the walk with Elias thing. And then Riker says, I'm going to make sure no one ever hears your name again. And apparently, to what I've heard, he got no reaction out there, uh, Riker, when he came out. Gunner, so I heard they had to actually pipe in some cheers on TV to make it look like some people were kind of applauding for him because I heard he just got zero reaction when he came out there and I heard this match was dead. I'm surprised this feud is still going. And why are we doing another one of these Symphony of Destruction matches? Of course, a lot of instruments involved, which the crowd popped several times, maybe for the big instruments like the cello being hit and whatnot. And these guys don't like drums and stuff into each other. But uh, after the whole cello thing, they went to the top rope. I know Elias was bleeding, and then they ended up going through some tables then, and Riker got the win. So, 
like I said, the crowd popped for the bigger spots, but apparently they did not care when any of these, well, maybe Elias, but they did not care if Riker came out or not. I just heard it was no reaction, that they had to pipe out crowd noises and whatnot to make it look good. So, like I said, not, don't know why we need to see this again. Well, I don't know why we need to see a Symphony of Destruction match, but the crowd seemed to eat it up, though. Uh, Charlotte came out, um, hyping herself up. Of course, fans want the chant, we want Becky, and Charlotte says, yes, Becky's at home breastfeeding while I'm out here dominating the entire women's division. And says she's the only 11-time women's champion in WWE history, as she talked about being, um, you know, Divas champion in the last one, a five-time SmackDown women's champion, and I guess now a, what, yeah, five-time Raw, uh, women's, Raw Women's Champion, which I kind of thought was like 13 or 14. Apparently, NXT does not count, okay? And trust me, there's going to be a lot to talk about NXT when it comes tonight. But, yeah, I guess uh, Charlotte winning the NXT title the last time or even before in the past when she won it, that doesn't count. Because I'm thinking, like, isn't she like a 13, 14-time champion? I think I got some numbers wrong right here. So, I guess we're not counting NXT, apparently. I thought that was kind of weird. Uh, cause I'm like, wait, 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 uh, 11? Like, I know she's had more titles than this. Like I said, they're already pushing her for the whole Ric Flair record, and I'm sure that's gonna be really soon anyways, but I swear it was like at least 13 or 14 times, uh, she has been champion. And I'm counting the NXT belt, so I don't know why they didn't count it, but very strange that they did not count the, um, NXT women's title. And like I said, she just won it last year, so why didn't they count it? I don't, I don't understand that. But, um... You know, Rhea Ripley came out, uh, where she did get a chant as, um, you know, talking about she could beat her any night of the week, and she wants to face her again on this show. Charlotte says, you're in no condition. Adam Pearce and Sonya Deville came out. Basically, you know, um, they'll book the match for the night, okay? If she can go, then she'll do it. She gets her rematch clause and whatnot. So, Charlotte ended up kicking off one of her heels and then kicking, um, Ripley in the leg, leaving her on the ground, you know, setting up for the match later on tonight into the main event, okay? So, um... Like I said, the promo here, um, not bad or whatever. It was all, I know people are going to say Charlotte sounds like a robot. I'm sure people are expecting Becky Lynch to come out, but nah, not the case. I've been hearing, a, you know, on the internet half the day that some people actually thought Tessa Blanchard was saying it was going to be a big surprise given it was Texas. I don't know if Tessa is from De uh, Texas or whatnot, but um, a lot of people were expecting her tonight, but we did not get that, by the way. So there was no... um. Tessa Blanchard, like a lot of people are somewhat saying today. Um, Tamina and Natalia went against Baszler and Jax. Jax have a new haircut and everything. I have not much to say about this other than Natalia and Tamina winning. Fans kind of started to chance Shane. I actually thought Shane was about to just drop both of these two and go on her own way. But no, it did not happen. Um, Jax ended up just headbutting um, Reginald, leaving him on the ground, which... This is the thing that doesn't make sense right here. So the fans just started chanting, Reginald sucks, Reginald sucks. But then the 24-7, uh, you know, goon squad come out with Tozawa and everybody. And then, you know, Reginald just starts doing a whole bunch of moves. And they start chanting his name. Then when he wins the 24-7 title. So, you know, we were on Reginald, does some cool flips and whatnot. But it's kind of funny that the crowd goes chanting, Reginald sucks. Then, like, five seconds later, it's like, Reginald, Reginald. Reg, you know, and he did his cool flips and whatnot, so maybe he's gone from, um, you know, Baszler and, um, Jax. I was hoping they were going to break up that whole team, because I'm kind of sick of them being as, as a team, and Baszler needs to go on her own, but obviously they're still keeping them as a team, and the 24-7 thing continues now with Reginald, okay? But strange that the fans say he sucks, and they cheer him after that. Uh, Sheamus went against Humberto, um... Ah, Humberto Carillo. Um, obviously, it was a rematch, I guess, from last week. Since uh, Humberto was 100% uh, percent, uh, up and whatnot, Sheamus wearing the face mask and everything uh, due to his nose and whatnot. Sheamus ended up using the mask, you know, uses a headbutt uh, in, on Carillo, and then he hit with the bro kick for the win. So, not bad. So, Sheamus ended up still uh, winning this match. Bobby Lashley came out for an open challenge. Oh, boy. And, you know, Lashley said what he did last night in Money in the Bank to Kofi Kingston and destroyed him and everything. is just a lesson to everybody in the back. And uh, MVP talked about how y'all were lucky to witness the Almighty WWE Champion. And in this thing, we partied and everything a little bit too much. And we were enjoying the good life everything. We had the women. We had the drinks. We was partying. It was all good. 
But now, right now, you know, it's back to business. We need to start taking over, okay? And then, you know, MVP, um, you know, Kobe was right. Lashley did kind of lose his edge. And he apologized and everything. But um, now, you know, it let that inferno out, all right? It let the inferno up real good. Um, MVP said, you know, it's no more, no more games, no more women, no more fun, no more bullshit. Which you can say bullshit on TV, but you can't say asshole and they block that out. Uh, I didn't understand that. Or even with the middle finger, they had to block that out. But last she said, who's going to open accept this open challenge? And who comes out? Man, we haven't seen in months. I've been wondering where he's at. Keith Lee. Keith Lee. And I thought he had, listen, I thought he had a good, decent pop when he first came out there. Uh, but then again, he had like a polite reaction then. And Keith Lee, who we have not seen, I believe he is from Texas. I forgot what part. But um, he comes out there. You know, everybody's excited. And he's, you know, looking at Lashley and everything. Um... In this open challenge match and whatnot, or championship contenders match. Wow, what can I say? This was not really good. So, and I'm thinking here is this. Like, Keith Lee can't lose, right? He just got back. We haven't seen him for months. We never really knew why he was out, if he had an injury or whatever was going on with him. We don't know. And you can't have Bobby Lashley lose. Like, he's the freaking champion. He's been looking strong since, like, real strong since last night. So, what do you really do in this situation? Yes, let's have Keith Lee lose right here in like six minutes, which was not really that good of a match anyways. And, you know, Lashley just fucking killed him out there, just in a dominator and then, uh, or like dominator and then he hit the uh, spear on him for the win. So, yeah, I don't know what to think about that. I, I don't know what was going on. with Lee. I don't know if they expected a bigger pop for him, given he was from Texas. Like I said, I know he's not from Dallas. So I know he's from a part of Texas, but uh, yeah, they just had um, I don't know, man. They, I, don't, I think they probably expect a big reaction in a way. I kind of did too, but like they wanted to know where he was at, but still, I, I'm not. I'm not really sure what to think on that whole thing. Okay, um, but then right after, we all know the rumors have been going on about this on the internet. Goldberg comes out, who even got a bigger pop than Keith Lee did, and that tells you something right there. Goldberg came out, Goldberg got, like I said, a big reaction, fans chanting Goldberg, Goldberg several times, so yeah, Goldberg was over right here, okay, really over, and he did his entrance, and he looked at Lashley, and he says, I'm next, so... Like I said, I'm sure it's gonna happen at SummerSlam, I know everybody wants to see Brock versus Bobby, which... I don't know, maybe one day, one day, but this just ain't the time. I think this would have been a great time to do it at SummerSlam, but nah, just not the time yet. And so, yeah, I guess we're getting Goldberg versus Lash Lashley, but um, yeah, man, um, Keith Lee, I don't really know what to say about that. That's kind of worrisome and whatnot, given the guy just has not been here months and he just loses to the champion in like six minutes out there. So I don't really know what to think about all that. But yeah, Goldberg, at least he was more over though. So um Goldberg super over right there. I see a lot of people aren't happy with that decision already of him being here in general. But yeah, a title match just comes in, gets a title match with literally no explanation, okay? Um Jinder Mahal came out, I guess it was his birthday, and he brought Veer and Shanky with him. Talking about Drew McIntyre, what they did with the money in the bank uh match last week, and they're gonna sing happy birthday until Drew came out and beat the shit out of all these guys with the a uh, chair, especially Shanky, since he hit him in the back of the chair like 15 different times and left him there. So yeah, uh he destroyed uh one of Gender's crew. Next, we got the debut of Cross. And wow, this turned into a shit show. Uh, and, uh there's many reasons. So, okay, Cross, he's still the NXT champion. He's making his Monday Night Raw debut. Obviously, they want this guy on the main roster very, very soon. I'm sure they're going to be taking all that NXT belt off of him very soon, too, since he's already now making his debut. But I'm looking at Cross and the vignettes, okay. But then, okay, no Scarlet. He's got the NXT title. No grand epic entrance. Like I said, they do the whole fall and pray thing. But, um, yeah, not like it was in slow motion. Not as good as the one they do it on NXT. But no slow motion stuff. No, uh... Like I said, no Scarlet, which is probably one of the best things to his entrance. And, you know, just the yelling, all that stuff. So, yeah, man, um, that kind of tells you something when he's got this generic entrance walking out. But who's he going against? Jeff Hardy. And what is Jeff Hardy? And Jeff Hardy did say this over a year ago. And I'm glad Jeff Hardy kept his promise on this. 
He finally brought back no more words, and the crowd popped big time once they heard that theme music, okay? So I was glad to hear that theme music. I'm like, he did it. And he did say he would bring it back once the crowds came back. So Jeff Hardy kept his word, and he kept his promise. So I was glad to, you know, hear that music again. But what happens, you know, Jeff's going for a twist of fate. He goes for the swan time. Cross gets out of the way. He tries to set up for the big elbow, but Jeff gets out of the way of it. Gets him into the corner, and um, Cross starts punching him. But then Jeff power bombs him, uses the ropes as leverage. And yes, he, excuse me. Yes, he beat the NXT champion, Jeff Hardy. Now, everybody's basically saying that Cross is buried. Cross is done. It's over. Well, they already fucked up with that entrance, so they already kind of gave a sign as it is already, but I, I'm, personally, I'm, you know, yes, let's kill the NXT champion right here. And, you know, he cut a promo saying Jeff Hardy made the biggest mistake of his life, so I'm assuming this is a few now, but I was surprised to see this, like, really. And listen, I know Jeff's taking a lot of L's, but at the same time, I wasn't really too mad because I was just glad to see Jeff Hardy win and they had no more words playing too. So I'm not even mad at this all the way. But yeah, Cross, uh, yes, the most very dominant NXT champion right now just got beat very fast. So everybody's already saying they're just burying these NXT guys, making them look like shit. Maybe it's to piss off Triple H on purpose. I don't know. But um, yeah, man, just. Folks are saying Cross is done and buried already. Let's kill the NXT champion out there, and I'm losing Jeff Hardy. That fast. But I was glad to hear no more words, though. Still, I was glad to hear that. Alexa Bliss was on her swing set backstage, talking. And what does she bring back that people don't want to see back? You know, they cheered her last night. Let's bring back the puppet Lily. Eve Marie and Dewdrop show up, looking at the doll. Um, Want to put the doll in the trash. Next, you know, Eve Marie just falls to the ground. I don't know what that was. I guess the doll made a trip and they end up leaving. So, I don't know about that segment. But uh, they got bringing the Lily back. So, I don't know why. what's the deal with that. Why are we bringing that back? I don't know. But in the main event, though, we got Charlotte versus Rhea Ripley for the title. Honestly, you know, this match just wasn't as great as the one they had last night at Money in the Bank. It was okay. But they ended up with a DQ after Char Charlotte tried to get out of Dodge. And then Ripley chased her and she got hit with the title. Charlotte celebrated, but Ripley ended up attacking her. And not that really long until Nikki Ash's music came out. And she hit the Riptide onto the ground, which I don't think that was a good enough beating. But um, what happens? Nikki Ash comes out and she hits one crossbody. And now we got a new uh, Raw Women's Champion. So Charlotte, once again, is being a transitional champion. She gets the belt because we got to get the numbers up there and get, make it Rick, match a Ric Flair's record. But... Um, yeah, Nikki Cross, I am no really big fan of superhero gimmick that much. Uh, do, 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 and stuff. But I think people just like Nikki Cross, or at least they want to see her succeed. That, okay, she just became the champion. So now what? Now what, basically? Um, so yeah, Nikki Cross, uh, Ash, very surprising. Very, very surprising that she. Um, you know, she won the title. So, I'm not sure what to expect from that. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah, transitional champion Charlotte. So, she will be like 14, 15 time champion soon enough. So, watch out for that. But, what a very bizarre show. You asked me for Monday Night Raw. We got a cash in. The crowd liked it. Like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of this whole superhero gimmick. Don't do 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 but yeah, just a very questionable cross taking the L, Keith Lee taking the L, Goldberg gets a title shot for no reason. Uh, like I said, we saw some returns and debuts, but some didn't make sense at the same time, too. Zero sense. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's raw for you, folks. Uh, got a full crowd, but still don't know what to do in some ways and, and stuff. You know, we got the... What Reginald's the twenty four seven champion, or um, the 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 best damn near thing out of this whole show was the Cena promo, and even Riker versus Elias could have been good, but the crowd just gave no shit about Riker though. They just didn't. Okay, um, yeah, that, that's the show for you. So yeah, that that's uh, that's Monday Night Raw. What what can I say? Let's something else I can make up. I don't know, but yeah, just some. 
very questionable stuff on this show. But yeah, uh, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at HoodNight890. Uh, I'm out of here. See you guys later. Peace. Uh, we will be back tomorrow night for an NXT review. Check out my Money in the Bank and it's anniversary review that's uploaded online right now. But yeah, man, this show, I don't even know the thing sometimes. I just do not know. But hey, that's raw for you, like I said, alright? I don't know where that's going. But I'm out of here. See you guys later. Peace out.